Welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the alternating group on the set of five elements. Okay, so we're currently in the process of proving that A5 is a simple group, and the way that we're doing this is by proving that if we have a group of order 60 with more than one seed of 5 subgroup, which we know A5 is, uh, then that that group is a simple group. And the way that we're doing that proof is by a proof by contradiction. So we're assuming that we have a group of order 60 which has more than one CL5 subgroup, but that there is also a normal subgroup in it, which we're calling capital H, uh, which is neither the trivial nor the improper subgroup, which hence would contradict the group being simple. And we're now trying to find a contradiction from that. We're trying to show that this cannot be the case, okay, that this normal subgroup that is not the trivial subgroup or the improper subgroup cannot exist. And so far what we've succeeded in doing is showing that the order of this normal subgroup cannot be a multiple of 5. Okay, now what options does that leave us with? Well, we know that the order of the subgroup must divide the order of the entire group. Now, let me just remind you of the prime factorization of the order of the group. Okay, so the order of the group was 60. This splits down into 5 times 3 times 2 squared. So now, what are the options, then, for the order of the subgroup, capital H? Well, of course, we can build it, the order of this subgroup, capital H, out of the remaining portions of the prime factorization, so out of 3 and out of 2 squared. So if we take all of them together, then we can get that the order of the subgroup, capital H, could be equal to 12, which is all of them multiplied together. Okay, then we could multiply 3 with 2, that would be 6, okay, that's another option. Okay, that's just taking one of the 2's out. Then we could take the 3 out, okay, that would give us 4. Then we could take the both 2's out, that would give us 3 as an option, and then we could take a 3 and a 2 out, that would give us 2 as an option, but those are the only options now for the order of this normal subgroup. It can be 12, 6, 4, 3, or 2, but it can't be anything else. Okay, it cannot involve the 5 is what we've shown so far. And now what I want to show you is that actually it can't be any of these. Okay, we're going to go through each of these and show why it cannot be uh, the case that it's one of those. Okay, so we're going to start off by proving that the order of this normal subgroup cannot equal uh, 12 or 6. Okay? Uh, and what we're going to actually do is reduce this down to the problem of showing that you cannot have a normal subgroup of order 4, 3, or 2 inside of this group of order 60, which has um, more than one seed of 5 subgroup. Okay, so I'm going to reduce the problem of showing that I cannot have a normal subgroup of size 12 or 6 down to the problem of showing that I cannot have a normal subgroup of size 4, 3, or 2 by showing that if I have a normal subgroup of size 12 or 6, I will have a normal subgroup of size 4, 3, or 2. Okay, now if you don't understand what I mean at the moment, don't worry, in a moment, uh, just watch what I'm about to do and you will understand what I mean. Okay, right. Uh, so, we're just going to use our understanding of groups of order 12 and 6 from the prerequisite videos that I stated at the start of this video. So groups of order 12, from the video entitled groups of order 12, we know that any group of order 12 will either have a normal seed of 3 subgroup, okay, or it will have a normal seed of 4 subgroup. Now remember, if you have a normal seed of subgroup, that subgroup is going to be the only Seedov subgroup. Because remember, all Seedov subgroups are conjugate to one another. So if you have a Seedov subgroup that is normal, that's as good as saying that it's the only Seedov subgroup. And if it's the only Seedov subgroup, it's actually stronger than being normal. It's actually a characteristic subgroup in capital G. Okay, so in our subgroup, capital H of order, if our normal subgroup was of order 12, I would be able to find you a characteristic subgroup of it of order 3 or a characteristic subgroup of order 4. One of the two must exist. That's what we've shown in the video on uh, groups of order 12. Not necessarily both of them, but one of them must exist at the very least. Okay, now, um, if we've got that K is a characteristic subgroup of H and H is a normal subgroup of um, G, then from the video on characteristic subgroups, we know that this implies that K is then normal in G. Okay, so 
because if I had a normal subgroup of size 12 inside of the group capital G, then I would be able to conclude that there would also be either a normal subgroup of size 3 or a normal subgroup of size 4. So if I can prove that we can't have normal subgroups of size 3 or 4, then I will have completed the proof that we can't have a normal subgroup of size 12. So what I have done is not proven that I cannot have a sub normal subgroup of size 12, but I have deferred the problem onto proving that I cannot have a normal subgroup of size 3 or 4 inside of G. Okay, and I'll prove that I cannot have one of those in just a moment. Okay, so I've got rid of this problem and clustered it with this problem, basically. And the same is true of 6. So from the video on groups of order P times Q, 6 is just 3 times uh, 2 here. Okay, so we can instantly conclude that it will have a normal seed of 3 subgroup. Okay, and again, the same thing holds here. If it's a normal seed of free subgroup, then it's the only seed of free subgroup. So a group of all the six will have only one seed of free subgroup. Okay, and therefore that will be characteristic in here. So K will be characteristic in H, and since H is normal in G, we're assuming that this is a normal subgroup in G, uh, we can therefore conclude that K will be normal in G. Okay, so again, if you have a normal subgroup in G of size 6, then it will also imply that you will have a normal subgroup inside of G of size 3. Okay, so again, I've deferred this onto proving this. So all that now remains for me to show is that it's impossible to have a normal subgroup inside of this group of order 6 with, uh, 60 rather, uh, with 6 C of 5 subgroups that has order 4, 3, or 2. And if I can prove that, then I can prove that these two are impossible as well by the arguments that I've just given. Okay, and of course then I will complete the proof. So how then now do I prove that we cannot have a normal subgroup inside of this group of order 60 with greater than one seed of 5 subgroup of order 4, 3, or 2? Well, again, we're going to do it by proof by contradiction. So let's suppose that we do have a normal subgroup inside of G of order 4, 3, or 2. What we could then do is we could quotient our larger group out by this normal subgroup. Okay, so we could construct the quotient group here. Now, what would the order of the quotient group be? Well, if the subgroup here was size 4, then it would be 15. If the subgroup was size 3, then it would be 20. And if the normal subgroup was size 2, then it would be 30. Okay, now, we know things about groups of order 15, 20, and 30 from the prerequisite videos that uh, I stated at the start of this video. Okay, so groups of order 15, that is covered in the video on groups of order PQ, because this is just 5 times 3. Okay, I can instantly conclude that for the larger prime, you have only one seed of 5 subgroup. Okay, so in a group of order 15, there is only going to be one seed of 5 subgroup, therefore that will be a normal seed of 5 subgroup. So what I can find is a subgroup inside of, um, which I'll call P bar actually, inside of the quotient group here, G quotient out by H, so I'll refer to a subgroup inside of the quotient group by bar notation here. So I can find you a single normal seed of 5 subgroup inside of this quotient group, if indeed it is of order 15. Okay, so uh, if you have a normal subgroup of size 4, then it will be possible to construct a quotient group of order 15, which will then have a normal subgroup inside of it uh, of size 5. Okay, uh, and I can conclude that, as I say, from the video on groups of order PQ, where we show that any uh, group of order 15 has precisely one seed of 5 subgroup. Okay, well, we don't specifically point it out for 15, but we do it in general for uh, groups of order 1 prime times another prime, and we show that for the larger prime, uh, which in this case is 5, you will always just have one seed of uh, subgroup for that larger prime, okay, which will be normal and characteristic and everything else. Okay, now 20. 20 uh, is, of course, equal to 5 times 2 squared, so its prime factorization is 2 squared times 5. Now, from the video on groups of order p squared times q, we can conclude that this will also have only one seed of 5 subgroup. Okay, uh, so uh, again, 
you'll need to watch the video on groups of order P squared Q. These proofs take too long for me to repeat them all here, okay? Um, but if you watch that video, you will be able to come to the conclusion that there's only one C log 5 subgroup uh, inside of a group of order 20. So again, I can find you a subgroup of size 5, okay, which is normal. Okay, and again, I'll call this P bar inside the quotient group, okay? So P bar here is a normal subgroup of size 5 so far, and I'm going to prove the same thing for 30. Okay, so in the video on groups of order 30, we showed that there is only one C log 5 subgroup inside the group of order 30. We've actually already used that result up here. Okay, now we're using it again. So again, there's only one C log 5 subgroup. So again, I can find you P bar, which is a normal subgroup inside the quotient group, and which has order 5. So in all of these cases, I can construct you a quotient group where you will have a normal uh, subgroup of order 5. Okay, now why is that a problem? Well, now what we can apply is the correspondence theorem. Okay, because we know by the correspondence theorem that any subgroup of the quotient group has a corresponding subgroup uh, of the initial group, capital G, that contains the uh, normal subgroup that you've quotiented out by. Okay, so P bar, this subgroup of the quotient group, will correspond to some P, okay, and that's why I used the bar notation earlier, which will contain uh, the thing that you quotiented out by, H here, and which itself will be contained within G. Now, because P bar was a normal subgroup of the quotient group, the P, the corresponding subgroup back in the original group, will be a normal subgroup of the entire group. As I say, watch the video on the third isomorphism theorem uh, if you're um, unfamiliar with this. Okay, right. So any normal subgroup in the quotient group will have a corresponding normal subgroup back in the initial group. Okay, now what will the order of this be? Well, this normal subgroup over here had order 5. Okay, the order of it back here will be 5 times the order of each of the cosets, which is the order of the quotient group, uh, the quotients that we quotiented out by, the normal subgroup which we quotiented out by, i.e., whatever, whichever size the uh, thing that you quotiented out by had, the normal subgroup that you're ending up with will ha have order a multiple of 5. So 5 will divide the order of P. So now, if you've got a normal subgroup of size 4, 3, or 2 inside of this group, capital G, I can prove that you will also have a normal subgroup inside of G that is a multiple of 5, and that contradicts our first lemma. Okay, we proved that you could not have a normal subgroup inside of this group of order 60 with more than one C log 5 subgroup. Okay, uh, that had order that was a multiple of 5. But now I've proven that if indeed you had a normal subgroup of size 4, 3, or 2, you could prove that you would. Okay, so obviously you can't have a normal subgroup of size 4, 3, or 2. And since if you have a normal subgroup of size 12 or 6, we've proven that you would have a normal subgroup of size 4, 3, or 2. We can hence prove that you can't have a normal subgroup of size 12 or 6 either. So we have now proven that this normal subgroup, capital H, cannot exist. Okay? It cannot have any of the possible orders. And hence, we have completed the proof that if you've got a normal subgroup inside of your group, capital G, which is a group of order 60 and which has uh, more than one C log 5 subgroup, it must be the trivial subgroup or the improper subgroup. Those are the only two options. And hence, any group of order 60 with more than one C log 5 subgroup is going to be a simple group. And hence, the alternating group on the set of five elements is a simple group. So we've proven the result that the entire video was intended to prove, and we will end this video here.